phosphorus is such a limiting factor because of its limited quantity. Uh, researchers today are saying that there's 60 years of phosphorus for our crops, like 60 harvests left in, in our soils without with the amount of phosphorus, how we're using it, um, the ways that you know we're applying it. And it's just, it is mobile in water when we apply it as a salt based. Um, so it washes down into the Gulf of Mexico, causes eutrophication. We have all of these issues with phosphorus and it's a limiting factor. So how do we n notice, how does phosphorus um, become available in nature? Well, mycorrhizal fungi releases phosphorus. Mycorrhizal fungi um, creates acids and enzymes that open up and make phosphorus that's otherwise insoluble or locked in really tight in soil particles and allows it to be used um, by plants. So does barley with phosphatases. Um, so that's something that like I am really focusing on in my garden is how can I limit my phosphorus use, but like open it up what I have, maximize the potential of what phosphorus is in my garden. Because phosphorus is one of those, especially as an organic gardener, like if that's important to you and not using salt based things, uh, um, well, and that's a misnomer. Salts are just a negative and a positive put together, but most people just call synthetic salt. So that's my mistake. I would like to not say that a synthetic because salts are salts are fine. It's just a negative and a positive an anion and a cation. But um, like bat guano, seabird guano, um, those are, in my opinion, detrimental to ecosystems. The way that we harvest them, um, you're destroying islands that have been that are nesting grounds to get the seabird guano you're destroying caves which are such sensitive ecosystems i mean a cave how many caves are there in the world and what kind of interesting life forms are in a cave and we here we are like well we need the bat guano so we're going to just scrape it clean and get all of these droppings out destroying this sensitive ecosystem so then we have rock phosphate which is mined and that has its own set of problems. I typically use rock phosphate or a bone meal because that's a byproduct. Again, it's probably also CAFOs. I mean, you can just like go on and on of all of the problems and you have to focus on what's important to you and what you can control. But I know that I can control um, accessing the phosphorus that's naturally available in my native soil by promoting a fungal dominance by promoting um, you know, the barley and the enzymes and acids that are going to unlock the phosphorus that's already there. Um, and that's a great way of, you know, another closing the loop of your farm is using your native soil, but using uh, perhaps the Johnson 2 Bioreactor or just establishing a mycorrhizal network that um, promotes, you know, the availability of phosphorus. So much good information there. I mean, that the the stat about phosphorus being gone in sixty years is just mind blowing on its own. I mean, it's it's kind of scary to think of the outlook. And uh, yeah, I'm glad you gave that as that information and some things that we can do there. This clip was brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code Mister Grow at fifteen to save on any of their gardening products.